Hey there, welcome back. Today we're looking at a Mac Mini from, I think, 2012. Let's have a look. This is a Mac Mini, it doesn't say. So I think this is around about the 2012 version. We have a 2.5 gigahertz Intel Core i5, 16 gig of DDR3 RAM. This is one of those uh, Fusion disks. So it's about a terabyte of spinning disk in 128 gig SSD. Let's have a quick look at the system report. This is a Mac Mini 6,1. What we're going to do today is we're going to see how far we can get with OpenCore Legacy Patcher on a Mac Mini. Okay, so we're unable to check for updates. Not sure why. Let's have a look at the terminal, see if uh, that gives us anything else. Let's do a sudo software update, I think. Couldn't be completed. All right, well, I don't know if there is a newer version of Mac OS for this one then. Well, I don't know why we can't find any software updates. That is a little bit unusual. That is a bit weird, but um, never mind, no matter. We want to get Open Core Legacy Patches. The reason I'm recording this, I mean, there's actually a whole heap of Open Core Legacy Patcher uh, videos on YouTube, especially at the moment, because Open Core Legacy Patcher 1.0 has just come out. And lots of people are seeing how old a piece of equipment can be and still run a modern Apple OS. So it is quite exciting at the moment. And obviously OCLP reaching version one is, is quite exciting in itself, to be honest. When you first go through the open core legacy patcher process, it can be a little bit, I'm not gonna say daunting, but it's kind of unusual. Now this machine isn't ideal because of the fusion drive, or at least not as I like to think of it. What I will do is take out this fusion drive and put a regular SSD in there at some point. So once I've got the SSD in here, then I will come back, reinstall OCLP and macOS again. I actually mainly use this device to run Batasera as a gaming device downstairs. And then we have like a little USB controller plugged into it and a USB stick and it boots into Batasera and we just play retro games. And I'm gonna change that. I'm gonna put a new version of Batasera on there. And uh, I thought, well, seeing as it's upstairs for a little bit, let's see what we can do with Open Core Legacy Patch on this one. First place to start is Google. What we'll do is we will look for Open Core Legacy Patcher. This is the proper page or the official page. What we wanna do is click on Get Started, Download and Build macOS. So first step is to make sure that our device is supported. That was actually amazing how many are. So let's have a look at the supported models page. We have a Mac mini and Mac mini from 2009. Oh, these are some issues, but I wouldn't worry too much about that. So ours is a Mac mini 6,1, which was late 2012. Um, we've got legacy metal. Okay, so we'll we'll worry about what that means later. Let's go to download and build Mac OS installer. Okay, we are now at 1.01 .01. models capable. This is a little bit nicer to see actually. But we also got this for our Mac Pro, which is nice to see as well. Let's get the files. Where am I looking? Ah, okay. So I've seen this happen before. This is on, on almost any GitHub page actually. If you see this where the assets aren't loading, the easiest thing to do is just take this link and open it in a different web browser. So I think I've got Google Chrome on here. So again, if you see this where the assets aren't loading up, usually if you open it inside a different browser, as you can see, if we look back here, we're still trying to load assets, but in a more modern version of Chrome, we can see them. So what we want to do is get the GUI up. So our file is now available to us. We can call Legacy Patch up. Okay, let's uh, extract it a second. Okay, now we've got the OCLP here. Right, so we've got the open core patch up. Mine looks a bit different because I don't have a depressing dark view displayed here. Right, so first what we want to do is create a macOS installer. Okay, let's see if this actually works this time. So we want to download a macOS installer. Let's see if we can install 14, which is Sonoma. Okay, so that's all finished. It's trying to extract the macOS installer and we need a password. Create a macOS installer. This is where we need a USB stick. What we need right now is a way of intercepting the boot so that we can install a patched version of macOS. If we try to install the original version of macOS onto unsupported hardware, the first thing it will do when you're in the installation screen is tell you that this is unsupported hardware. Okay, so we want to have a patched version of the installer and we want to put it on a USB stick 
so that we can completely wipe the old disk, okay? Oh wow, this has got a whole collection of macOS's on there. We've got macOS Sierra, macOS Sonoma, macOS El Capitan, and macOS Yosemite. I'm not sure why they're all on there. I've never noticed that come down before, so I don't know if these were on there before. This one is a patched version of the macOS Monterey. So this is a perfect disk to use. Create a installer, yes. Install macOS Sonoma and we want to install it to the ultra yes we want to erase it i always need password for this kind of stuff we will check in later so the installer has been created successfully would you like to continue and install open core to this disk yes and it's now asking if we want to so if we go through this build and install this essentially just click the other button for us this top button in that picture this has added these extra things that we need. Okay, so if you've got things like disabling the secure boot model in, model, fixing core graphic support on Ivy Bridge, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so this is a open core EFI for the Mac Mini 6.1 has been built. Right, okay, so we're gonna install to disk, fetching information on the disks. Again, we want it to go to our USB drive, which is that one for me. Volumes, yes. Password again. And now it wants to reboot the, the computer and it's telling me I need to hold the option key so that we can get into the patched installation. Okay, so I'm just gonna save my screen record in a second. Okay, and I am holding down the alt key or the option key. As you can see, we have the Macintosh HD, install macOS Sonoma and the EFI boot. Okay, so the install macOS Sonoma is essentially what's on that USB stick, and at this point, it would still act like a normal version of the uh, Sonoma installation. So, if I were to select that one, I would be told that my Mac is unsupported. So, instead, we want to go to the EFI boot here. This is essentially like a recovery partition. So this is going to let me go in and wipe the old disk. So again, I have another option. Do I want to go into Macintosh HD, which is the image that's already on there? Or do I want to install macOS Sonoma? So I'm going to say that one. So here we are in the recovery. I'm going to wipe my other disk because I don't need that old version of macOS that's on there. So we're going to disk uh, utility. We're going to erase this. We are finished here, so we'll leave the disk utility. We'll go back to the installation screen or the recovery screen. And this time we'll choose macOS Sonoma. Do you agree? Yeah, blah, blah, blah. It rebooted and it came up with a uh, the option of installing macOS or macOS Sonoma. So by doing that, it's actually just continued the installation. It's like the second phase of the installation. And at the bottom of the screen, I now have 29 minutes remaining again. So at some point, we'll check in again. It just rebooted. And so this will be the one, two, six, second reboot, I guess. So that we're coming into the third phase. And again, the option was install macOS Sonoma or, you know, macOS Sonoma. And because macOS Sonoma hasn't completed yet, this is still an installation, but you do not click on install. Okay, so it defaulted to the other option, like as if it's already been installed. We've got the Mac Mini or the install macOS Sonoma. Again, the default is to just go with um, what it thinks is on the hard drive. So this will be the third reboot, fourth phase. And again, it will default into Mac Mini. I'm not touching anything. There you go. Kind of hands off at the moment don't really have to do a lot a little notification at the bottom there we are 16 percent completed 17 okay and as a reminder this is the mac mini 6.1 from late 2012 which probably means this has a, a second or third generation i5 okay but the processor i don't believe will be the thing that holds this mac back uh, it will likely be the disc so it's got 16 gig of RAM. That should be more than enough for most things that we're going to do on this device anyway. Like I say, most of the time we don't really use this device for anything other than uh, Batocera on this USB image. Again, we've got the option to install or to just let it go with the default option, which is to boot from the disk, its internal disk, and that's what it's doing at the moment. Okay, so this is just the regular macOS. Let me set up your computer stuff. So I'm going to say 
Well, indeed, I do live in the UK. Okay, don't care about any of that stuff. Okay, let me join a Wi-Fi network a second. I'm not going to sign in because I don't really need to. Well, this looks very, very much like the Mac OS that I have installed on my M1 MacBook Air. That seems like that's uh, much simpler than before. Let's just check the applications a second. So we have an additional app that you don't normally get on a fresh installation of Mac OS. And that we've got the open core patcher. Previously, there were some extra steps that we had to do. That all seems to have been automated now. It does seem a lot simpler. Everything is working really well. I am amazed how good OCLP is. Now we've reached version 1 or 1.01 in this case. I am astounded by how well this works actually. I mean this wasn't a slow computer anyway. This is actually really nice, really slick. So we've got the Mac Mini, 2.5 gigahertz Core i5, Mac OS Sonoma on a 2012 Mac Mini, 16 gig of RAM, an i5. I couldn't be happier with that. I think that is really, really good. Thank you for following along. If you do have any questions, just let me know. I've done this a few times now on various versions of OCLP and, and I am, as I've said several times, amazed by how simple and efficient this process has got. This really has extended the life of a lot of Macs. It's a fantastic application and the team behind it are amazing. If you do have any questions, let me know and I will be happy to help.